If you don't already know this about me, it's worth noting. I love animations. They're essential in an app in order to create a smooth and delightful user experience. One of my favorite things about Jetpack Compose is that it provides powerful and extensible APIs to make it easy to implement various animations in your app's UI. Many Compose animation APIs are available as composable functions, just like layouts or other UI elements, and they are backed by lower-level APIs built with Kotlin coroutine suspend functions. To understand more about the beauty and power behind an animation, I spoke with my friend, Doris Liu, the engineer on the Compose team, who built all of the animations you can find there. Prior to Jetpack Compose, we noticed that uh, developers were fairly intimidated by um, building animations. They would first build everything in their app except the animations, and then later on they would go back and add animations when they have time or feel comfortable. It's such a pity because we think animations are so essential to the end user experience. So part of the motivation for Compose Animation is to provide a, a set of animation APIs that are simple enough so that developers feel comfortable building animations in the V1 of their app. Let's talk about what an animation is. They're an essential part of the mobile app experience. You touch your phone and it reacts. Animations use motion design to inform the user by highlighting relationships between elements, action availability, and action outcomes. Motion celebrates moments in user journeys, adds character to common interactions, and can express a brand style. Doris mentioned that developers were hesitant to put in the work to build animations into the V1 of their apps. So I asked her if perhaps that's because animation design wasn't always easy or clear. When Android first came out about 15 years ago, the concept of mobile phone was relatively new to all of us. Our primary design reference for UI is desktop and web. But as we get more and more comfortable with the mobile devices and the touch interactions, users started to demand more subtle interactions as a way to get a delightful experience as they navigate through the apps. Around the time of Ice Cream Sandwich, the Android team has really focused on making the platform built purposely for mobile, including a new animation system built earlier that year. And then in Jelly Bean, with the Project Butter, we focused on reducing the latency and providing a guarantee for frame rate so that any touch interaction would feel super responsive. Both of these technology advancements uh, were critical in delivering animation capabilities to delight our users. Doris and I then went back to talking about animations before Compose, for example. When animating views, in the past, you had to first update the final position of the animation and then call start on the animation. But as Nick Butcher pointed out in a talk from 2019, developers wanted to use the Animate to Final Position API that does a combination of both for you. But for me, the real power comes when you, instead of using start, you use this Animate to Final Position API. And what this does is if the animation isn't started, it will just kick it off. But crucially, if an animation is running, um, then it will retarget it, and this will do that magic of maintaining the velocity for us and updating the target value. Yeah, that talk was super impactful for me uh, because it demonstrated how pleasant and convenient it can be to have APIs that anticipate the common use cases and then combine the multi-step boilerplate code into one simple animation call. It made me start thinking about API design from a use case-oriented perspective. A beautiful work of art is a series of layers of paint. Similarly, an animation is a series of motions that come together in a beautiful, expressive way. And the paintbrush that we use to build an animation? Jetpack Compose. OK, Doris, tell me about the first composable you wrote. Ah, without doubt, that is uh, uh, animated visibility. It is a. Uh, probably the most commonly used composables for animating appearance and disappearance of UI elements. Actually, at around that same time, I was also working on this other concept called Anime Content Size. Um, it was this one-liner feature that allows the UI to dynamically resize itself when the content changes. We released Anime Content Size first before animated visibility to get feedback on this, this new concept of reactive resizing animation. It was received overwhelmingly well. Uh, developers really loved it. So this feedback from developers really helped shape the overall philosophy of animations in Compose. Yeah, definitely. Uh, for me, collaborating with the, the community is really uh, the essential part of my job. And um, I mainly use Slack channel and uh, Twitter as my source of feedback. 
um, to see how experimental, experimental features are received or whether uh, there's any other features that developers are asking. Just seeing what people build um, on an ongoing basis kind of give us a, a sense of what is a common use case. As I mentioned earlier, we want to make the common use case uh, incredibly easy, but that does involve understanding what is a common use case. And then also when we notice that when people struggle with a, a particular animation feature, we would then go back to the drawing board and investigate what was making the feature difficult to adopt and refine the design to, to uh, improve upon the, those features. So hearing, hearing from the developers around the world is definitely super useful in terms of evolving the uh, animation system. Thank you so much for the time, Doris. New animations in Compose fill me with emotion. So we better get moving, adding them to our apps. <laughs>